Happy Sabbath, everyone, and welcome to our lesson study and our Sabbath school lesson review. So it's a great privilege for me again to be with you this Sabbath for a, for this for our lesson. And let me introduce myself again to you. I am Mafe Sharian Hernandez, and I am glad to be with you at this Sabbath school. So before we dive in our lesson for this week, I would like to invite everyone for a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, our great God, King of kings and of the Lord of lords, the creator of this vast universe, we praise you and worship you this Sabbath day, O Lord. And thank you so much for this privilege to sit at your feet, dear God, and to be students of the Holy Spirit, your Lord, the Sabbath school. We're praying that whatever uh, you wanted us to learn this Sabbath, especially during our Sabbath school lesson, dear Lord, uh, you will prepare our hearts and give us an obedient heart, O God. Forgive us from all our sins, and we're praying for the Holy Spirit to be our master teacher this moment. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So again, thank you so much for having me this Sabbath day. A friend of mine asked me to, to share the Sabbath school lesson with you, and as I'm studying the Sabbath school lesson uh, earlier, I'm personally blessed. And it's really a privilege for me to, to share to you what God had taught me in my study and in my reading before I'm sh I will sh share it to you. So uh, our lesson's title is God uh, Share God's Mission. It's uh, we're on lesson four. And... I tell you, our lesson this week is amazing. Okay, so last week, our lesson is about our focus on God's call for, on God's call to mission. And today, this week, is sharing God's mission. So it says here in our lesson, I hope you have your lesson with you, that this mission, uh, sharing God's mission, it starts with a call, but it does not end there. Without the action of sharing, the call would be of little use. So our lesson this week is share God's mission. I hope you have your Bibles with you. And our Sabbath school lesson so that we can have a beautiful study this morning. Okay, our memory text for this week is found in John chapter 13, verse 34 to 35. It's not very new. I know everyone is familiar with this. But let me read to you our memory text this week. It says that. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. May they love each other as I have loved you, but this all will know that you are my disciples. By this all will know that you are my disciples if ye have love for one another. You want to be known as God's disciples? Let us love one another. Okay. So, God's mission is to save humanity. To achieve this purpose, He has assigned each of us a part in fulfilling that mission. So, remember our lesson last week? As I remember one of our Sabbath school teacher here shared that Anyone, every one of us has a call. However great or small our talents, our talent is, however many or few are our talents, we have a place in God's field. We have a mission to do. And says here, God's mission is to save humanity. And he has assigned each of us, you, 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 and me, 
a part in fulfilling that mission. Through the example of Abraham, as we'll study throughout the week, our study, our lesson has shared to us some ways in which we can share in God's mission just through the life of Abraham. And I know in the Bible, through the the life of many, many Bible characters, there's ways in which we can share God's mission. And this week, it's specifically shared to us the life or, of Abraham. So this week, We'll know more about sharing God's mission. And there's three things that we'll learn here. Hospitality, how to share in God's mission. Hospitality, love for others. And intercessory prayer. And the mission results. Accept individual decisions. Submit to the divine will. So let's go on to the first sharing God's mission and the first one way for us to be to share in God's mission is the hospitality so there in the life of Abraham says here in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 12 do not forget hospitality for by it some have hosted angels without knowing it so have you welcomed angels in your house in your heart, have you welcomed someone before you know you're not familiar with or a stranger for you, yet you welcome in your house and at the end you you uh read a story in the Bible that when you welcome someone or a stranger, you welcome an angel. So here's the story of Abraham said here, sitting while Abraham is sitting bes uh in the shade of the door of his tent. He saw three people pass by him. And what did Abraham do? Immediately, he ran towards them. He did not wait for them to request his hospitality, but took the initiative and offered them what he had. Can you imagine what Abraham did that time? While well, he was sitting at the uh, the door of his tent, seeing people coming. Oh, what's the tendency if you are in, uh, the place of Abraham? What you will do? Maybe some of us, me personally, because I, before I'm sh like uh, I'm I'm shy to people, so I will not be the one to initiate to approach them or approach people to come inside our house. Oh, I'll be ashamed that our house or my house will not, is not clean yet to entertain for me to entertain people but here Abraham is the one who initiated to or who requested that the people to come and to come inside or in his place and Abraham wanted to satisfy not he did not just welcome or them or invited them to come in but he wanted to satisfy and as well to do uh, the best of his ability, to the best of his ability, the needs of those whom he interacted, those whom he invited. So he provided for their needs, food, water to wash their hands, to wash their feet, water to, to quench their, their thirst, and especially a chair to sit on so he entertained them very well he welcomed them therefore um, uh, not only the material ones not only the material things that they needed but also the spiritual ones if you read the story or the record of this in genesis in the book of genesis it was it became abraham's um like it's norm or it's normal for him every Every time he travel or he trans transfer uh, a place or a location for his to fix his tent, he built an altar wherever he went. And uh, when he left the place, the altar will be left there. And when people who knows Abraham pass by that place, uh, are like, 
the people are hidden nations or the people of different countries, they will stop in that place and they were offered as well a sacrifice. Because uh, Abraham, like, they saw that it's the norm of Abraham and they, they witnessed it as he is doing that when he was there in the place. So it becomes Abraham's uh, lifestyle. He is doing that every time. In this way, Abraham became a blessing to those around him. What an example for us to imitate. Abraham's hospitality. So that's the first one. And the second one is love for others. And it says in Genesis chapter 18, verse 23, And Abraham came and said, Will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Do you remember this, uh, this story when uh, Abraham commun uh, communicate with the Lord, have a conversation with the Lord when God showed, uh, told Abraham what his, what his plan or for the Sodom and Gomorrah, for the people there. Who was Abraham worried about the time? The righteous or the wicked? There, uh, it's written there in Genesis chapter 18, verse 23. Who was Abraham worried about the time? Let me read verse 23. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Abraham had had the opportunity to meet the inhabitants of Sodom when he rescued them from um, Kedor Lomer and accompanied them back to their city. The, it's recorded in Genesis chapter 14 when, as far as I can remember, when Abraham um, saved or like rescued Lot and the other uh, the people in Sodom and Gomorrah from this king Kedor Lomer and Abraham actually at that time talked with the king of Sodom and Gomorrah at that time. He had an opportunity to communicate, to talk to them. And at that time, Abraham already knew that they were wicked. He also knew that a righteous family dwelt among them which is Lot. God knew Abraham's heart that time. So he explained his plans to Abraham. Diba? Uh, remember, Abraham is God's friend. They were very close. He has a close relationship with God. And God, because of his relationship with Abraham, he wants to explain to Abraham, he wants to share to Abraham what are his plans to for Sodom and Gomorrah. And God even waited for Abraham's reaction. You can read that in Genesis chapter 18. If Abraham had not loved the wicked inhabitants of Sodom, do you think he would have said, Rescue my nephew. Do not let him perish with the wicked. Hmm. Why not? Why did Abraham ask the Lord to to save? Not why did Abraham didn't ask the Lord to save or to rescue just Lot or just Lot's family? If he don't have the love for all the people dwelling there in Sodom and Gomorrah. Love for others. We are to love others because die, God died for them. And there is still hope that at some point in their lives, they will accept salvation. If we'll read uh, here in our lesson, I'll read to you the, uh, the part that really touched my heart. It says here, Yet Abraham, knowing for himself the love of God, 
appealed to him, to God, in their behalf, in behalf of those people living there in the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham knew that human beings always can return to God in repentance. To Abraham, saving the inhabitants of these cities would give them a chance to repent. In the end, Abraham based his request on what he personally knew about God's love for human beings. Remember, the relationship of Abraham with God. Abraham knew what's in the heart of God and how God loves his people too. He himself had a great love for sinners and he knew that as long as there is life, there is hope for salvation. So we are to love others because God died for them. And there is still hope. Well, there is li still life. There is hope that at some point in the lives of those people, they will accept salvation. So first is the hospitality of of Abraham and his love for others is are the two ways how to share in God's mission and there's another there's one more the third one is intercessory prayer James 5 verse 16 says confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much um after god explained to abraham his plan for sodom and gomorrah abraham interceded with god on behalf of its unworthy inhabitants Surely, it's it's their conversation. It says here, surely among them there are fair people who do not deserve to die. Abraham said, maybe fifty. Lord, let me read to you. Per adventure, verse twenty four in chapter eighteen of Genesis, there be fifty righteous within the city. Wilt thou also destroy and not spare the place for the fifty righteous that are therein? Hmm. And God said, Oh, for their sake, hmm, I will not, I shall not judge, uh, I will not put them to an end, or I will not just judge them or destroy it for their sake. And Abraham again said, what if there's only 45 and it went down to 40, 30, 20, and 10? And what's God's answer? Hmm, we'll know later what's the result of this intercessory prayer, how God is spent to it. And yet, actually, there were only four. There were four minus one that were righteous or just that time. And God spared an entire city, city of Zor, for their love. That was the answer to Abraham's intercessory prayer. Who are the four? It's Lot, his wife, his two daughters. And minus one, Lot's wife. So there are just there are three. There are three. And God spared an entire city, the city of Zor, for their love. And we must intercede for those with whom we are in contact. Not only for their physical needs, but also for their conversion. I remember um a speaker named Pavel Goya. He said, when we pray for um, temporal, temporal blessings, 
it's okay to to pray for just once or twice not necessary that you will pray for it every day continually because god is a god who never forgets your prayer but when it comes to the conversion or salvation of a soul we must persistently pray for it every single day so we must intercede for those with whom we are coming in contact with every day it's abraham's intercessory prayer it's his spirit of prayer and according to patriarchs and prophets 100 page 104 love for perishing souls inspired abraham's prayer remember the second one that we've talked about earlier it's love for others and that love inspired abraham to intercede for them for them our mission says in our in our lesson our mission cannot be successful without prayer or intercessory prayer it is not our words or eloquence that will convert our friends or acquaintances it is the Holy Spirit. This is why in any mission in which we are engaged, we must pray for each person individually. And let us continue to pray for the conversion of our family, our friends, of those people that God, through the Holy Spirit, will inspire us. And let's go on to the next, the second uh, point that we'll talk about in the lesson. First is sharing in God's, in his mission. And second is the mission results. What are the results of the mission? Especially uh, an example of in the life of Abraham. First, he, what is that? The first one. The hospitality of Abraham. The second one, he engaged or shared in the God's mission through his love for others. And the third one is his intercessory prayer or his spirit of prayer. And what are the results of this mission? First, let's accept individual decisions genesis 18 verse 25 far it be from you to do such a thing as this to slay the righteous with the wicked it's abraham conversing with the lord saying these things so that the righteous should be as the weak so that the righteous should be as the wicked far be it from you shall not the judge of all the earth do right Notice here the similarities between Lot's behavior and Abraham. Abraham, sitting at the door, saw three individuals and the same thing with Lot, sitting at the door, at the gate, in Sodom and Gomorrah, when he saw the people or the people he welcomed later. Second, he rece Abraham received the angels in H verse 2 of chapter 18. Lot, at the same time, he received the angels. They didn't know that they received the angels and they welcomed the angels at the time. The third one, Abraham invited them to eat at the Lot at the same do, did the same thing. He invited them to it. Abraham interceded for others. And Lot did the same thing as well. When Lot interceded for others, when the angels revealed to him what they will do, Sodom and Gomorrah at that time, Lot went to his son-in-laws, his sons, and I believe to other relatives and friends of 
of his, of his family yet only his wife and his two daughters responded and here in our lesson um there's a record there that says whatever else lots fault Lot had some good characteristics still. They are they have similarities Lot with Abraham. Abraham interceded for Sodom. Notice this these things. Abraham interceded for Sodom, but only three people survived. Only three people were saved. Lot did the same thing. He interceded for his sons, daughters, son-in-laws. But only two daughters survived and saved. Was the intercession of this righteous man a failure or not? Hmm. God will not save anyone against their own will. That's why the title of this, Accept Individual Decisions. Because salvation depends on each person's choice. Abraham did his best to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot did his part interceding for his sons, Sons in law and many more. But there are only few, very few people survive. The same thing that happened during the time of Noah. Noah, I believe, he prayed for and interceded for his family, for his relatives, for all the people there in that place. We don't know how many people or how many are the population of that time of Noah yet we know that very few were saved we even don't know the population of the Sodom and Gomorrah in the time of Lot in the time of Abraham yet we know that there are very from the thousands of population at that time there were only three two and very few few people were saved However, intercessory prayer offers opportunities, though it seems that there is only few people who were responded positively and who were saved and survived the time. It's still encouraging our lesson is still encouraging us to intercede, to do the same thing that Jesus is doing right now there in the in the most holy place in the heavenly sanctuary interceding for us that intercessory prayer still offers opportunity for change that would not otherwise be offered and let me read to you uh from our lesson says here the small number of residents of sodom who were saved has implications for our own mission not everyone will be saved. So when someone did not respond to, to your Bible study, did not respond positively, or did not accept the message you, you brought to them, let's not be discouraged. Let's continue to intercede for them, to pray for their conversion and salvation. We would like everyone to accept Jesus and his plan of salvation, but each person has free will. Our task is to invite as many people as possible to make the choice for Jesus. While we are carrying out our mission, God assists us through the Holy Spirit, but he will never go against the will of anyone. So free will means that in the end, no matter what we do, no matter how much we pray, salvation comes down to each individual's choice. 
Yet, our lesson in the Bible and God is still encouraging us to do, to intercede for others, to intercede more and to invite more. And I believe the inter uh, the same thing that the intercession of of Abraham and of Lot were not failures. Your intercession or intercessory prayer for others and my intercessory prayers will are not a failure and will never be a failure. Next, submit to the divine will. And Abraham went up in the morning. Remember the time after um, he has this conversation with God and um, told God that what if there's five, there's ten, who are righteous in that in that city, will you spare it? The next morning, after that, he went up, and he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah as if he's waiting for, uh, the fulfillment of his prayers and there's a sorry for. Her, for Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's waiting for what's the response of God to to his like uh their conversation the day after uh, the day before. And behold, the smoke was rising from the earth like the smoke of the furnace. Oh, it seems that I told God that you will spare Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Yet Hmm, we'll know. When God called Abraham to go to Canaan, to Canaan, to Canaan, and be a blessing to the world, Abraham obeyed, even though he don't know where's the place. It says here, um, even though, uh, that place that God showed him seems like, oh, maybe, um. He don't know yet the place. Is that familiar with the place? He really has no idea. But he did not ignore the call of God. Nor he did not say, I don't want to go. Or I like it here. I like to stay here. Or the land uh, you showed me, it seems strange. Uh, Abraham did not give, give any ifs or buts. And when having uh, to separate from his nephew Lot the time, he let Lot choose the territory. Remember that? Knowing that God would fulfill his will in any case. God had promised Abraham that he will become a great nation. And Abraham just trusted God's promise to him. And he allowed or he let Lot to choose the place where he wants to be and just Abraham just go on for he believed that God will fulfill his will in any ways or in any case wherever God will bring him it will be fulfilled and after his intercessory prayer for Sodom Abraham left the next morning the verse that I first read Hoping to see his request fulfilled. But what he saw was destruction. And yet there were no complaints from Abraham. Once again, he submitted to the divine will of God. So as to us. Just like my experience tonight. And many, um, many nights or many days or Sabbaths ago. Like it's uh evening here in the Philippines now, and I don't know in your place, but I cannot see you. Uh, I don't know who are you. I don't know many things yet. When my friend told me that to can you can you please lead the Sabbath school lesson review, and then and then just the call and through my devotional this morning before I've uh, I received a message or a invitation from my friend and then oh I must go I must do it even though I cannot see it 
So I must exercise submitting to God's will. And I'm so happy to to experience it. And I believe that God has something for me and for every one of us because I am personally first blessed by the lesson and I'm as I'm sharing it to you now, I hope that you be blessed as well. So when Abraham submitted to God's will, he did not complain. We must as well always accept God's will, even if it differs from our desire. So just let me share to you an experience of mine just this week or past few weeks. Actually, here we have like this coming November 1 to 5. There's are three um, events that will happen at the same time, November 1 to 5. And my heart is like it's divided because I wanted to go in all the events. <laughs> and I, I prayed to God for months, months ago. And then, Lord, I wanted to go there in Nueva Era to, have the, to, to attend the camp meeting. I wanted to attend the camp, a reunion. And I wanted as well to, to go to um a mountain area, mountain area here to visit and to, to to minister to the native people there. And as I am praying to the Lord and is revealing to me uh his will and me as well as weighing the things, the advantages and disadvantages, I came up to the the decision that I want to be here. But as I am weighing and being honest to myself, Lord, I don't want to go there in the place you wanted me to go because of this, because of that. And um, because of the lesson, the previous weeks, like two weeks ago, and the last week, and then this week, um, God is really making it a strong rock and a foundation for me and to really believe and to trust his will and to submit to his divine will for me to do so i will go somewhere in a place i will i will go there in the mountains to minister to the native people not just because i want to be there i want to go there but it's because it's not very comfortable i will Go there with the people I'm not I'm not really familiar with. I don't I usually go with and I will be the only one missionary going up there and God wants me to be a witness to share his love to the people there. And he doesn't want me to just like stay in a comfortable place for me. And Many nights, for many nights, I'm crying that to God, that Lord, please prepare my heart, because I know that that will be hard uh, journey for me, and uh that will be really a challenging for me, and I know in myself that I not I'm not I will not be comfortable, and it will be really uh, like a challenge for my heart as well, like oh, yan yan, but as I decided to submit to His will, I know that our lesson says that. He, ah, let me read to you. No matter what God is calling you to do, remember that you should remain open to being blessed as you share and that God is ready, is already there ahead of you. So it will be like 12 hour hike before we arrive in a place. So I'll, I'll be needing your prayers. And for the two other events as well, the camp meeting, they're in the north part of the Philippines. And for the reunion here, just here in the southern part of the Philippines, uh, actually it's still um reunion of the missionaries of like Path Group, a Philippine amazing path center of evangelism. And so we're, we really uh, will appreciate your prayers and as well as for the Cagayan Philippine Youth for Christ. So, four. We will be needing your prayers for the four events that will happen here. So, let's finish this lesson. 
uh, reading to you Patriarchs and Prophets, page 140. Love for perishing souls inspired Abraham's prayer. So I read to you earlier. While he looked the sins of that corrupt city, he desired that the sinners might be saved. His deep interest for Sodom shows the anxiety that we should feel for the impenitent. We should cherish hatred of sin, but pity and love for the sinners. So, I hope and pray that the, in the lives of Abraham, we get inspired and uh, get lessons as well for us to, to imitate in our life. And to, to close it, let's have, and I hope that you will take this challenge this week, or weekly challenge. In our cities, we faced obstacles to preaching the gospel appropriately and effectively. We need to beg God to intervene. Let's intercede for, for the people there in the cities. And an advanced challenge or challenge find a way to connect with someone this week or, or tomorrow, today who is going through a difficult situation similar to yours. Find a way to connect be intentional tell the person you are you are praying for them and ask god to show you what you can do to help them so last week we know already that we have a call god is calling us for a mission and now it's time for us to share in god's mission so shall we pray father in heaven thank you so much for your great love for us thank you so much for the life of Jesus Christ at this very moment, dear Lord, interceding for us and help us to, to do your mission and to be part, not just part of your mission, dear Lord, to, but to be in your mission as well. Father in heaven, please help each one of us to always imitate Christ as you saved us. Many times you've been so patient, faithful, so good, so kind, and so loving to us. Help us, dear God, to, to share that to the people around us as well. Thank you so much for your great love for us, O Lord. And thank you so much for your forgiveness. Thank you so much for redeeming us and saving us and for interceding for us. And help us, dear God, not to be discouraged to intercede for people. Though seems that the result of it dear god is a failure but it's not a failure and it will never be a failure to intercede for the conversion of your people thank you so much for the working of the holy spirit oh lord continue to bless us this sabbath day and i pray for my brothers and sisters hearing this uh prayer this moment dear lord and for this church for this ministry i pray father in heaven that may you continue to prosper it and that it may bring more people closer at the feet of Christ and of knowing you, dear Lord, and it will bring more people as well to intercede for others too. Thank you so much for the experience we had with you the whole week. And thank you so much, Father in heaven, for the glorious day of Christ is coming very soon and that we will be together with you there in heaven in the place that you have prepared for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So thank you so much, my dear brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath again to you and God bless everyone.